to all my students who are watching right now and even those who are not in my class but are visiting this channel, come and join me as I review on some essentials of qualitative research in preparation for the writing of Chapter 3. Let's get started. Watch this. Qualitative research involves collecting and analyzing non-numerical data. Ano nga ba ang mga halimbawa ng non-numerical data? Ito ay tulad ng text, words, or phrases, o pwede rin namang in the form of video or audio. O kaya kahit images may also be a non-numerical data, as long as it does not involve numbers. And this non-numerical data are used to understand concepts, opinions, or lived experiences of your research samples na mas kilala sa tawag na respondents. Ang mga data na ito ay ginagamit upang mas mapalawig natin ang ating kalaman tungkol sa isang problema na ating na-identify so as to generate new ideas and to offer solutions to the problem. Definitely, qualitative is the opposite of quantitative research. Dahil ang quantitative ay gumagamit ng numerical data for statistical analysis. Meanwhile, ang qualitative naman ay kadalasang ginagamit sa humanities and social sciences tulad ng subjects like anthropology, sociology, education, health sciences, history, at parami pang ipa. Bibigyan ko kayo ng halimbawa ng mga tanong na ginagamit whenever we collect qualitative data. The questions that I'm about to give you target different research topics. Halimbawa, how does social media shape the attitude of the youth in this modern era? Sa Tagalog, paano hinuhubog ng social media ang ugali ng mga kabataan sa makabagong panahon? Ang tanong ay how, paano, at hindi how much or inan. Meaning to say, hindi target ng research ang kung ilang kabataan ang naapektuhan ng social media ang pag-ugali, kung hindi kung paano nakaka-apekto sa asan ng kabataan ang social media. Ang data na makukuha natin sa tanong na yan ay hindi numerical kundi konsepto. Another example would be, what factors influence employee retention in large business organization? Ano ang mga salik na nakaka-influensya upang manatili ang isang empleyado sa isang malaking business organization. Ang hinihinging data naman, gamit ang tanong na yan, ay hindi bilang ng empleyado na nananatili sa malalaking kumpanya kung hindi kung ano ang mga dahilan ng pananatili nila sa kumpanya. Again, that is an example of a qualitative research question since it does not seek for numerical value. That is just one among the distinct difference between qualitative and quantitative research. This time, let's talk about some approaches to qualitative research. Pero, tandaan, qualitative research is used to understand how people experience the world. While there are many approaches to qualitative research, they tend to also be flexible and focus on retaining rich meaning when interpreting data. And here are the common approaches which include grounded theory, ethnography, action research, phenomenological research, and narrative research. They share some similarities but emphasize different themes and perspectives, one of which is the grounded theory. What does grounded theory involve? It's a grounded theory approach and researcher and co-collect a rich amount of data from a larger research samples about a certain topic of interest. Pagkatapos ay i-analyze ito upang makabuo ng isang bagong theory na makakatulong upang maunawaan ang isang kaganapan o pangyayari. Halimbawa, maaari tayong mag-conduct ng research about 
why a lot of students hardly come up or hardly cope up with the new learning setup due to pandemic. We could get data from students who would explain how they feel about the new learning setup at kung paano itong nakaapekto sa kanilang pag-aaral at bakit sila nahirapan o nahihirapan. Through that, malalaman natin ang totoong root cause ng problema at makakabuo tayo ng theory and could offer a solution as well. Ang susunod ay ethnography approach. Sa approach namang ito, ang researcher ay mag sa group or organization to understand its culture. Ibig sabihin, papasukin ni researcher ang mundo ng kanyang iimbestigahan or pag-aaralan. Halimbawa, to research the culture of a large tech company, you decide to take an ethnographic approach. You would work at the company for several months and use various methods to gather data. Some of the methods could be, first, you take field notes with observations and reflect on your own experiences of the company culture. The next, you distribute open-ended service to employees across all the company's offices by email to find out if the culture varies across locations. Or, you could also conduct in-depth interviews with employees in your office to learn about their experiences and perspectives in greater detail. The next one is phenomenological research. From the word phenomenon, the researcher investigates a phenomena or isang pangyayari or kaganapan. Here, the researcher would describe and interpret the participants' lived experiences. Halimbawa, gusto mong pag-aralan ng naging buhay ng mga war survivors or war veterans. Pwede din ang tungkol sa nakalipas na mahigit na dalawang taon ng pandemic. Siguradong marami ng kwentong nabuo sa buti ng bawat tao sa ating lahat. Example, losing family members and loved ones in this time hasn't been easy. So maaari din yan maging halimbawa ng phenomenological research. The last we have is narrative research approach. Here, the researcher would examine how stories are told to understand how participants perceive and make sense of their experiences. The researcher focuses on a topic and analyzes the data collected from case studies, surveys, observations, or other similar methods. An example of which could be women leadership, exploring on how women leaders of the country view leadership. And those are just some of the common approaches we use in qualitative research. That's it for today. I hope you have been refreshed on those essentials of writing qualitative research. Thank you for watching and listening, my Ecom learners. God bless you all and always remember to wear a happy heart.